Hey guys, welcome back. It's Shelby. Today we are decorating a birdhouse to be Christmas themed. It's gonna be so pretty. I have done one of these before a couple years ago and I gave it as a gift and they really liked it. So I kind of wanted to make another one. What you're gonna need um, is either a birdhouse. You can get these at the craft store. I'll link it below if you can't find one. Or you can make them out of balsa wood and hot glue. That's what I did last time. It worked out just as well. If you can't find a birdhouse, um, you will need glue. I have Elmer's glue. You can just use a little bit of it, but I have a big tub, so I'm using a big tub. Christmas cards, those are the important things. So I have these, um, I have a couple different ones. Just grab ones that go together that you like, that you think are pretty. You will need either, um, you can get kind of gritty white paint that kind of simulates fake snow, or you can do what I'm using, which is texture medium, um, white acrylic paint. It's gonna give you that really thick texture anyway, and then just glitter for your snow. I'm using four different types. I'm using um, just the fake snow that you get in the little impulse aisle. And then this one is more like cut up cellophane, so it's more iridescent. Then I have my kind of white translucent glitter. And then I have these, which I love. I don't know if they read on camera, but they're little snowflakes. They're super cool, so pretty. Um, so I will be using that and I'll link everything you need down in the description in case you can't find it along with my socials. Let's get going. Okay, so first things first, what you're gonna do is kind of measure out the sides of your birdhouse. Basically you need six cards for a birdhouse like this. If you get one with multiple sides, you'll need more, etc. Um, and then basically just whatever sides you're putting cards on, you need a card for. So I have six sides for this, I'm not doing the bottom. Um, so I need six cards and what I'm gonna do is just kind of measure them out cut them to fit and I'll be right back when I have my sides. All right, so I have my cards all cut out. I've got my roof tiles, I've got the front and the back and the ones for the little side. I've poured some glue into a little container and basically what I'm going to do is just coat the entire thing with a thin layer of Elmer's glue. So just dip your little foam brush in your glue and just do a nice thin little layer So the wood is gonna soak it up a little bit. Basically, when you first put it on, it's gonna feel dry, kinda like you're dragging it down sandpaper. That means the wood's not saturated enough. Just go until you can glide smoothly across it. That's how you know you have enough glue on there. And then just keep putting on a little bit more until it glides smoothly. Real thin layer, you don't need a whole lot. I'm gonna work in sections. So I will be doing the roof first, put the cards on there and then the side, rather than making the entire thing a big gluey mess and trying to work from there. There we go. So this part's actually really super easy. You just take your card that you've pre-cut, put it on. And it's actually not incredibly crucial that the corners match up. I did do a fairly decent job of matching them up, but say like you just like slightly cut it wrong there or there's like a little peak of wood showing, don't worry about that on the edges. They're gonna get covered anyway, so it really doesn't matter. It can peek out a little bit over the bottom here. You can see the card sticking out just slightly, maybe you can see that, yeah. I'm totally good with that. You just don't want it peeking out up here because that's gonna throw your lines off. So that's really the only important thing is just line it up really well up here and then um, just press it flat. I'm gonna use my wrist because it's a more flat angle than my hand. Smooth it down. There we go, that's side one done. Grab your other rooftop card, which I believe is this one. And put it on the other side. Same thing, press it down flat and then we'll get going with the sides. Now that the glue's on, just put your cards on. They're pre-cut, so super easy. Slide it up in there and there we go. You'll 
You'll notice kind of a theme working. So this is the holiday home with the lights and the snow and then we have people and then one horse open carriage traveling through the forest. Over here I've got more of a city scene, people um, ice skating in the, you know, the little pond that the pond or the hockey rink or the mall or wherever they decide to ice skate but it's definitely like a city thing um, they close it off and everybody goes and there's tents and stuff you've got the holiday shopping in the city so I purposefully did those on separate sides um, but you can mix it up however you want you don't even have to do these types of cards you can do Santa reindeer just you know scenic pictorial scenes whatever you want but um, if you do want a theme kind of doing side and side is a good option as well We'll paint the back and front real quick with some glue and get our cards on there as well. So you can see this craft actually goes pretty quickly. Um, the real time you're going to spend is in trimming the cards to the right shape, but once they're done, the assembly is actually pretty quick. And the final product, which you will see in just a few moments, is really cool and really um, kind of fun and festive and bright and cheerful for the holidays. It makes a great gift for anybody who loves birdhouses. It makes a great um, kind of craft for anybody who likes making them or for, um, you know, kids or somebody who's looking to like make a gift for their grandparents or something like that. This part you want to be careful um, just around the edge of this is good you don't have to worry about painting the whole thing and then just slightly around the edge of the hole to keep the card in Press it down firmly and let it dry for maybe four or five minutes while you get your glitter station set up. And by that point, it should be ready for us to apply the trimmings and what makes it go from kind of a little ramshackle cute, but not, you know, quite there project to like absolutely stunning. Okay, so I think I found an angle that works. Um, lay out something to protect your table. And basically anywhere there's exposed wood, or an edge where the cards connect, you're going to put paint or that fake snow stuff if you have it um, on the top of the roof, down the edges, collected along the sides, you're gonna put a thicker layer because that's where snow naturally collects on a house. Just kind of against the edges, just like maybe a small amount, like a little tiny bit, just to hide the edges and make it look like snow kind of blew against the building. Um, ignore my paintbrush, I use it a lot, so, um, yeah, it started out white, now it's blue and it's paint's leaving. But anyway, take your paint and I'm gonna work from the bottom up because I find that easier than trying to like not touch things that are drying on the way down. So just squeeze a nice little layer, like a fair amount, onto the house. If I can do this backwards to me towards you, kind of at an angle, it should work. And you're not trying to get it flat, you're just trying to, you're gonna be using a lot of this. Cover everything in what makes it look like believable snow mounds. So just kind of tap it down. Just like that. If you need more, awesome. You will need a lot of it. You'll probably use pretty close to this whole tube, I would say. Maybe not, maybe like half, but it wouldn't surprise me if we use the whole thing. And this isn't going to dry down flat. This is that um, texture medium, as I was saying earlier, so it's gonna stay thicker than most paint. That's why you want this stuff or the, um, the fake snow, which they were sold out of. Essentially what that is is paint with glitter mixed into it. It's not super glittery, but it is chunky because it's got the particles in there. So that's a good alternative as well. That's what I used um, previously when I was making these, but like I said, I was out and I know this will work just as well. So easy substitution if you can't find it. Spin the whole thing. 
you still see that with the little lip? Yeah. It's like toothpaste. So I opened just the first package of Craft Snow. This is what I'm using for texture. It's not super shiny. It's just like little white bits of, I guess, plastic. Um, and that's going right on top of the paint for my first layer. And I'm going to pour some just in a little container just to make it easier to dip into. So see, it's kind of fluffy and cool. Same brush, I'm not even gonna bother to clean it. Just get a nice big ton of it on there. And press it on top. kind of see the idea of the snow kind of building along it. It's looking pretty cool. I'm excited. Next up I'm taking some other glitter, just kind of the iridescent one. Oops! I opened that wrong and it went everywhere, but that's okay. Come on. It's going to go everywhere. So this I am just taking with my fingers and I'm just going to push it in a few places. I don't want a ton of this the way I did with my other one. It, they're clear, they're just iridescent. So I'm just kind of pushing them on top. I don't want them, you know, being the star of the show. I don't want people like really seeing them. Just adding a little extra sparkle to the existing snow. And I'm really just doing it kind of on the corners and in the middle. You can do it wherever you want, um, but I'm not doing it even all the way across. Just here and there. Sprinkle it in, kind of like seasoning. There we go. I'm gonna find a place to prop this up. We'll do that against the tripod. Yes. Okay, great. Now we're gonna move on. We're gonna go up the sides, like I said, just a very small amount. Very small amount there. Uh, where's my paint? There it is. I'm not going to bother cleaning my paintbrush throughout this whole process, so if that bothers you, sorry in advance, but um, I don't notice that it makes a difference and makes the project any better, so I don't do it. Very small amount. Just kind of run it up the side just a little bit, collect it more on the bottom because that's how snow actually falls. It's hard to do without actually being able to see it, but if I can see it, then the camera can't, so. Maybe I can like watch the camera and, eh, sort of. There we go, so just a little bit on the edges, just like that. Going back to dipping in my snow and doop, 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 just press it in, just a little bit. Not very much, you don't want a solid line of snow up on it, just. Just disguise it a little bit. So do that for all four corners. You already did one, so the three other corners. There we go, moving on to the roof. So basically do the same outline. You're gonna put a lot on the kind of eaves portion and then like a nice thick amount up here on the top. Can you see that? Oh yeah, it's just barely in frame because that's where the snow falls. So we're gonna start up there. Let me turn this so you can kind of see what I'm doing. I can pull it away from me. There we go. So I'm literally just squeezing it right down the center of the roof and letting it make its own kind of snowfall pattern. Just like that. You can see on this side, same thing. And then I'll do the same down here. 
This paint's pretty thick, so you don't really have to worry about it running on you. Just make like a nice little layer. And then down the front, you wanna cover all that exposed wood too. So we're gonna do the same thing. Squeeze it on nice and thick. We are about halfway through this tube, so as I said, you do use a lot of it. So that is what it looks like just with the kind of thick paint on there. And then we're going to go in and just kind of tap it down a little bit. Just as we did on the bottom, no real rhyme or reason to it, just kind of make sure it's adhering and not just globs on there. You're not really painting it so much as just literally tapping it. I'll show you on the front as soon as I get to the side there. What's cool about this paint too is it kind of creates like its own little icicle. So if it wants to do that, just kind of let it. It's pretty cool. If it doesn't do it on the side, I'll show you on the back. So it kind of hangs down the way snow actually would, which is cool. It's a white card background, so it's hard to see, but there's like a little fake icicle thing right there that's kind of happened just with the way it worked out so perfect leave that because that's great this side I'll show you I'm literally just kind of tapping it down a little bit and then up brushing the sides to get that effect just like that and then on the top too just a little bit this corner you want to make sure that it looks nice and thick and like about to drop snow on your visitors heads because that's how real houses look same with this side make sure you get the edges of the cards nicely concealed and we're just gonna press 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 like that and then while you're at it you might as well do the hole and the bird perch so true to form big pile on top of that and then press it down so it looks like it kind of melted around it because that's what we're going for see kind of from the side it's like an odd shape kind of just looks like snow on top and then just kind of like melting down a little bit you can get a little bit to hang off the bottom that's even better because then it just looks more like melting snow more realistic then take your brush and just kind of don't put any more paint on it I usually don't um, just kind of stick it in and kind of get the edges a little bit just so it looks like a little bit of snow blew in but really to hide the edges of the card Just like that, frosty little perch. How cute is that? We haven't even add added glitter yet. Adorable, love it. Okay, so now I'm going to get um, all these speckles off me and get the actual glitter set up and I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back, I've got my glitter opened. I'm gonna go in with a very light layer of the snow that we've previously been working with and just kind of lightly, lightly go over the glue texture paint that we just put on there, the texture medium acrylic. And this is just going to give it a little bit of that flaky texture. Just kind of lightly tap everything. We're not trying to saturate it the way we did down below. Just get a little bit to adhere over everything so that it doesn't um, all look, you know, like flat and homogenous with the glitter as far as texture goes because it certainly won't as far as the iridescent goes. Uh, but this is going to create kind of some irregular shapes in there and um, give it a more realistic snow appearance. So that's what we want. So this side's basically done. You can see, pop some around the hole. Oh, I should probably show that part. Okay, so I just like put some around the hole um, and then just like slightly, just like a little bit, you know, not a whole lot. 
just a little bit. Right about now you'll be happy you've got this down to catch everything. Well, catch most things. Mine can't be that big because it's on a tray so that the camera can see everything because I couldn't get everything in frame any other way. Um, along with my face, or at least most of my face, because otherwise it like awkwardly cut off here and I don't know, that's just weird. I do it in some of my videos, but I try not to because, you know, like talking from a face that like isn't in frame, but like your body is. I don't know, that's weird to me. I don't like it. I don't like the way it feels. Okay, there we go. Now we're going in with our real glitter. I'll put my paintbrush in the tray. And I'm going to start with my snowflakes. These I'm going to kind of strategically place. They're actually heavier than I thought they'd be. But these are them. If you can see them, they're so pretty. Sprinkle them on top. And by strategically place, I mean I'm just going to push, push them in with my fingers. Like they're not individually being strategically placed on here. Like I'm just getting like however many will fit on my finger and then... So this is great because if somebody really looks closely at the project, they're going to see these wonderful details of the little snowflakes and be like, oh my god, that's like incredible. Like so many details. And then if they don't, it's just a little bit of iridescent shimmer that, you know, looks great but isn't necessarily like, oh wow, amazing. But that's kind of how snow is in real life. You know, you look at it and you're just like, oh wow, a blanket of white. Well, pretty, reflects light, you know, like it does its thing. But then you see all the little individual snowflakes up close when you're like paying attention. And that's when it's really beautiful and unique and special. And so it's gonna be the same with this project. Okay. I think I got all the sides, awesome. Here we go. Now we're going in with our actual glitter, yay, just to make everything a little bit sparkly. So really just kind of get it on your finger like this. And what this is going to do is adhere to any of the exposed paint, because that's going to take a while to dry. It's acrylic, so not, you know, as long as like oil paint or anything would. Um, but you do want to like cover up any of the, you know, crazy wet parts because this will just kind of seal it all in. It's also what makes the glitter adhere and it's going to give a lovely beautiful iridescent shimmery snow effect so I'm excited for that because I love glitter. People hate on glitter. I don't get it. Probably because I'm the one who likes it and like uses it and gets it all over the house and then other people are just like why is there glitter everywhere but I'm the one who did it so I think it's fantastic. It's just the other people who have to suffer. But if you also love glitter and also put it around the house, then nobody suffers and everyone wins. Let's get enough glitter on here to last forever. So a couple of the snowflakes and glitter have collected on the roof. I'm just gonna leave them there. Let them kind of do their own thing. So yeah, this is almost done. I'm gonna pull it off the um, lovely paper bag to show you. Um, but I'm really excited. This turned out so well. This is really beautiful. I'm gonna leave it out kinda to dry, but this is essentially exactly what it's gonna look like when it dries. It's not going to change or anything. Um, so you don't have to worry about like, you know, the paint going clear. That's why we didn't use Elmer's glue to adhere the snow because that goes clear or white glue, whatever you call it. Um, that does go clear, but we use the chunky paint because you're going to keep your white snow color. And that's pretty important to this project. Yeah, that is, that is it. That is done. Let me get it off this thing and clean up the area and I'll show you the final result. Detail shots. You can see the snowflakes kind of glistening over here. And down there as well. See how everything turned out. The little snow hanging down there. Yeah, isn't this cute? This is so cute. All the little glitter and everything. The little home scenes. This is awesome. I love it. So great. Okay, check it out. It's done. I put it on a little bit of the fake snow just to give it, you know, a little bit extra holiday spirit. 
but this is it. I'm going to be turning it so you can see kind of 360. So you've got the different scenescapes on there, snowflake, more of a warm, cozy country scene on this side, and then the log cabin home on the front. I think this is fantastic. I'm super happy with how it turned out. Let me see if I can get in frame here awkwardly. Hi. So yeah, I think this turned out great. This is this is awesome. This is exactly how it's supposed to turn out. It's a pretty easy craft. I hope you liked it. I'll link everything you need down in the description in case you can't find it at the craft store, along with my socials. I hope to see you soon. Bye.